kind of mentality as she is now in her third season at Baylor as we get things started here in San Antonio. Miami is in their black jerseys with the orange and off the backboard right away, Lachey Dwyer gets things going. As we look at the Baylor lineup, a new starter today, Bella Fauntleroy, started part-time last year, but this is her first start of the year, the most consistent player for Nikki Collin, especially defensively. But you've got Andrews, who's the only player for Baylor who has two years or more of experience in a Baylor uniform. The handoff, the jumper, first shot goes down for Baylor. As we look at the Miami lineup, this has been their lineup all year. We talk about Roberts. We've got Dwyer and Day Wilson handling a lot of the ball handling responsibilities. Jada Patrick, the transfer from Columbia, and two possessions, two scores for Miami. A whistle on the floor, a turnover, and it will be Miami again. Miami went on that magical run to the Elite Eight under Katie Meyer, who has done, done such a terrific job now in her 19th season at Miami. They had a 17-point comeback in the first round. They knocked off number one seed Indiana in the second round. They ended up advancing on and just lost to LSU in the Elite Eight. But it was an incredible run for this Miami program last year in the NCAA tournament. How many brackets, Brenda, do you think that that Indiana upset <laughs> broke? Because that was un an unbelievable game. I mean, just a great run. Katie Meyer, one of the best to do it in the business. Dreana Edwards knocks down the three-pointer, shooting 33% so far on the year from distance. Jada Patrick picks up her dribble and then throws it away. Sarah Andrews steps in front of it. Uh, and that's just a good possession defensively. They don't capitalize there, but I know Nikki Collin was worried about containing Miami's dribble penetration. You get a glimpse of how quickly they can turn a, 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 a miscue by Baylor into offense. So making sure you take care of the basketball is going to be pivotal for the Bears tonight. Dwyer scored on the other end, and then Jade Walker. Jada Walker is just so good. You know, we saw her at Kentucky, and she was playing off the ball and someone, but she was scrappy. She was hardworking. She got a lot of playing time, and I think she's settling into Nikki Collins' system. Yeah, and learning that new system. She hasn't missed a free throw yet either as she made the, she completed the three-point play and she's now 10 for 10 on the year. But Miami has come out on fire. Cheyenne Day Wilson hit that jumper. Edwards stepping through, dishes it off. Lil Page Buds, last year's Big 12 Freshman of the Year. You know, Baylor's up-tempo. They average 90 possessions. Miami average, or Baylor averages 90. Miami averaging 80. But they score a lot off their turnovers where you know, Baylor's in the half court sets. Yeah, Bella Fauntleroy picks up her first foul trying to defend Spearman. Boy, what a game Spearman had when Miami knocked off Mississippi State when they were ranked in the top 25. She had 15 rebounds in that game. Jada Patrick. No, and a good rebound for Little Page Buck. Almost gets away, but Jada Walker is able to corral it. Walker gets loose, scores it. Walker that's where already with nine points for Baylor. She's really just taking what the defense gives her, and she's had some wide open layups there on the in the ball screen action. Just leads where the defender is, goes right to the paint. A turnover for Miami. Well, we've had a little bit of that today, and uh, just on a neutral site here, both these teams undefeated. Baylor beat Utah earlier this year when Utah was ranked fourth in the country. Miami knocked off Mississippi State when they were ranked. Well, Andrews 
along with Drayana Edwards, are the leading scorers on this team. Both average over 12 points a game. Andrews had some time off in the offseason with an injury. Baylor on a 7 to nothing run over the last two and a half minutes and a, another empty possession for Miami. Hasn't been a lot of fluidity to their offense. And an 0 for their last four attempts. Now 0 for 5. And Baylor comes away with the rebound. There's Felder. Felder, the transfer from Ohio, scored 22 points a game last year and gets back-to-back -back buckets. And a timeout call. And so you're seeing the different lineups that Nikki Collin can go to. 11 to nothing run for the Bears. And a blocking, no, an offensive foul called on Lamaya Hilton. Felder, little pick and roll action with Bartley. And another score, Felder is called instant offense and we have certainly seen it today. Oldacre finally stops the 13 to nothing run for Baylor. Well, Oldacre can bring size. I mean, she's six foot six. She's got experience, she's a sophomore, but she gives you that at least physicality, a presence in the paint where Miami can give a touch and even a kick out if you need it. But I say they, they, they got to at least get into the paint and kick it out. Allie Stedman, number 21, into the game for Miami with the basketball. Oldacre had a terrific game against DePaul as she makes back-to-back -back baskets. She had 10.7 rebounds, and Katie Meyer said we would not have beaten DePaul had it not been for Oldacre in that game. Pass from Felder over to Bella Fauntleroy. First basket of the game for Fauntleroy. Time winding down in the first quarter. Bucket for Miami and Day Wilson to back WNBA champions with the Aces. Of course, she was herself a great player here on this court for the San Antonio Silver Stars when they were still in San Antonio. And it's great to see her in the house. Yeah, if you if you haven't seen her Hall of Fame speech, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's motivational, it's inspirational, it's it's fantastic. And think about the two years Becky Hammond has had in the WNBA. Two years, two titles. Not a bad start when people expected her to be an NBA coach and, and wait her turn, and she goes to the WNBA, and, and, you know, she has been a joy to listen to when she's they're interviewing her during games. I'm sure she hates it, but you get so much information because she's just still coaching during interview, interviews with Ryan and Rebecca, and it, it's just so fun to listen to her. I love it. And I can't let a Becky Hammond reference go by without saying, I've known Becky since she was in eighth grade. She came to our basketball camps at the University of Nebraska, and so it's been so fun to watch her career uh, since she was a, a youngster. Is she still the same? <laughs> She's a lot the same as Miami. She's like, is starting to make a little bit of a run here. Nice pass. Asia Blackwell is into the game here in the second quarter. She gets her first basket of the game coming off the bench for the first time this year. Well, let's credit the, the Baylor perimeter players for just keeping their head up and finding players in the paint and sharing the basketball. Right now, the, the Bears have six assists on 12 made field goals. And, and, and if you're Miami, keep your hands up defensively. Try to obstruct the view so it's not so easy for the guards to see open players in the paint. Jaleah Williams gets to the rim to draw Miami within seven. Baylor led by as many as 13, but Miami chipping away here at the end of the first quarter and the beginning of the second. Andrews from three. That's what Sarah Andrews does best, shooting 40% on the season. Miami shot clock winding down. Four on the shot clock. Do they see it? Yes, get it up in time. Williams, no. And skying for the rebound is Yaya Felder. This is 
good defensive play. Kyla Oldacre at the back of the defense snuffed that one out. And a three-pointer goes down for Allie Stedman. That's the first three-pointer of the game for Miami. I mean, they scored 20 points off of those turnovers and for me a bad shot is a turnover that is not a bad shot for Baylor <laughs> Felder is well hot she certainly is nine points already four of six from the floor Stedman with another look at a three gets that one to go back to back three pointer Steffi we'll see if you and I get to mold into wearing football helmets on air again but, but we'll the do pass anything, was beautiful right? I caught it it was great and, and I wore a Georgia helmet, which I never thought would happen. And, and here we are. <laughs> right? Former Gator. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Baylor up now 34 to 26 in the second quarter. It's the Hall of Fame series. San Antonio, neutral site for these two undefeated teams. Who will get their first loss of the year between Miami and Baylor? Baylor preseason pick number two in the Big 12 behind Texas who has had a remarkable season as well so far. Miami preseason pick six. I think after they lost eight from that team that made it to the Elite Eight last year, people didn't know how they would recover, but they have played incredibly well here in the early going. Yeah, and I mean, we had a fantastic conversation with Katie Meyer just about when she scheduled this game, she really had six players for sure, you know, and then obviously was able to go into the portal and find... Uh, some missing pieces that have uh, been great contributors for her team now. So you know, this is a pivotal moment right now in the game. Four minutes left here in the second quarter. When we talked to Katie Meyer about, about this game and what she was looking for, the turnover on Dwyer gives the ball back to Baylor. And you're right, that's the that's the factor that Katie Meyer looking for, toughness from Baylor. I think both these coaches talked about what a great test this game will be. And we've seen it. How about Jada Walker? She scored nine points in the first five minutes of the half. Hasn't shot the ball since then and comes in with that <laughs> tough shot. Yeah, Walker exudes toughness. I mean, she can get to the rim. And I think for me, it's her ability to finish with contact. She's not, you know, she's not super big. She's not super tall. But she's 5'7", and I think she's got, you know, the heart of a lion. And she'll go in there and, and, and be able to knock it down as she gets to the free throw line. Is that 10 of 10 or 11 of 11, Brenda? She hasn't missed a free throw, I don't think, this season. That's right. That's right. Would, Coming in, I would not she know that was life, nine of but. nine. <laughs> right. Cheyenne Day Wilson, who I think is she, she's got to get going for for Miami. Had a solid freshman year at Duke and has been in the starting lineup now for the last three games for Katie Meyer. ACC freshman of the year, ten points a game on the year, shooting thirty eight percent from three point range, but hasn't hit one yet today. She gets both free throws, though, to draw Miami within nine. Fritz in the corner. Andrews splits a couple of defenders. Nice floater, too hard off the backboard. Andrews gets it off to Edwards. Shares the basketball. Has been really impressive to me. Just making the extra pass to get a higher percentage shot. I think that's why they're one of the best in the country in terms of assist to turnover ratio and, and the way that they can score it. Yeah, already nine assists on 16 made free throws for Bay or made field goals, excuse me, for Baylor. And that's really what Nikki Collin hangs her hat on. She wants this team to be great because of the way they share the basketball. There's the extra pass over to Andrews. Andrews now with a couple of three-pointers. She's now in double figures along with Jada Walker. <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for Baylor and a nice block from Little Page Buzz. Out in transition, Felder. Nice pass to set up Edwards. Oldacre kicks it out, but Walker with a hand on it. Streaking to the basket is Jalea Williams. It's just heady basketball, understanding good to great shots. Keeping the dribble alive, Williams is fouled on the way to the basket. And as versatile as this Baylor offense that they're seeing, 
And I think, and I think too, Brenda Baylor's done a nice job of just taking care of the basketball because Miami loves to get out. They like to score off turnovers. They scored 20 points off of other teams' turnovers and miscues. And they just haven't been able to string enough stops together to really feel some momentum offensively to get some easy buckets. Julia Williams hit the two free throws on the other end. We're under a minute to go in the second quarter here in San Antonio. Sarah Andrews will step back. That's her third three-pointer of the game. Yeah, Miami showing a little zone. Trying, you know, trying to throw different looks at Baylor, but hey, if you're Andrews, you see a zone. <laughs> That's the green light, light the ultimate green light, yes. Dariana. Little Page Bugs looked like she stripped the ball at the free throw line. And you can see her numbers for the day. Three of four from beyond the arc. Roberts makes one of two free throws for the Canes. And the shot clock is off as Baylor will have an opportunity for the last shot of the half. Felder, offensive rebound, inside to Fauntleroy, and Baylor with 49 points in the first half of play, Steffi. Do you have a favorite memory of that arena? Oh, wow. Uh, there there are the a spot. lot, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, one of them was driving through an ice storm to get there for uh, a great game at the end of a Big 12 uh, season, but uh, a lot of great games over the years, watching Brittany Griner and Odyssey Sims and longest active winning streaks, Baylor right there behind UConn. Shot clock winding down as Andrew's going to have to hoist it up, almost got it to go on the first possession, and Steffi, what does Miami need to do to chip away at this lead? I think they got to be a little bit more aggressive in their on ball and uh, just exactly great backdoor cut by Jasmine Roberts. And, and Baylor was just kind of forcing uh, Miami to use the screens and then kind of helping in the gaps. So great read by Miami, but they're bread and butter. And what a follow up there off the miss. Little Page Bugs was right there for Baylor to put it back Woo. in. Nice behind the back. Look at that from Lachey Dwyer. What a move through the paint. have really put in the work in the offseason to get better at their ball handling and it's been so good this season and Miami now a little full court pressure throwing mm -hmm. some defensive different looks I think that's a great idea Ooh. by Katie Meyer but Walker they're got hit in the face Dwyer goes to work again shifts hangs scores Fauntleroy too strong and Jada Patrick with the rebound pushing ahead Miami changing directions Jasmine Roberts and Miami has a little going on right now yeah no doubt great word to use to describe Miami's defense especially it's just rotating more with a purpose covering some gaps closing out a little bit harder on shooters there you leave Andrews wide open mm. Can't do that. Fourth three-pointer of the game for Sarah Andrews. There's been toughness, but it's been, <laughs> Baylor's just been tough to guard. You know, I, I think that she's learning about maybe what are, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses against a team like Baylor, a top ten team. Neither neither team has really been to the free throw line today. Good offensive rebound by Little Page Bug. Stedman. Slicing through Blackwell short. Nice pass. Blackwell with another miss inside. It's been tough sledding, even 
shots in the paint not going down for either team right now. And then a foul called on Miami. Rosaria so Spearman picked up her third foul and will go to the bench. Oldacre back in for the Hurricanes. Good ball movement for Baylor. Fauntleroy, Fauntleroy, finally Fauntleroy went to Kickapoo High School, a tradition-rich high school in Springfield, Missouri. Her mom played for Missouri State on that 2001 team that Jackie Stiles was on. Her mom, Carolyn Wyrick, on that team. Well, I got some ties to Springfield, Missouri, so I got to give the shout-out to... Uh, when they come through, Brenda, if her arm would have kind of stayed to her body, but bringing it up and out, I think, was a, was a good indication they were going to ele elevate that common foul. Mm -hmm. We've seen what a strong player Felder is, and so she clears a pass no matter what. But, yeah, a little extra there for the intentional foul. Roberts leads them in scoring, has just five points, and it's been tough sledding all around for the Miami offense. Shot clock is off, and Miami will go for the last shot of the quarter. Oldacre, out top, looking for someone to throw to, has to hoist it up. Can't get it to go. We had a lot of fun on Big 12 Media Day. And Dre showing her talents. Started her career at Utah. And then, of course, made that amazing run through the SEC tournament a couple of years ago. Had to sit out last year uh, with the transfer 444 rule. And uh, really getting her first opportunity to get on the court this year, Steffi. You know, I, I interviewed her after that Kentucky uh, buzzer beater against South Carolina in the SEC tournament. She's yelling in the microphone. I got a grip on her so she doesn't run away. She wanted to take my mic. I mean, it was like the, the, one of the best <laughs> interview experiences. And also, like, I don't know how this is going to go. And she was awesome. And she's just a joy to be around. Yeah, wasn't able to play last year has been... So excited to get out on the court for Baylor. You can just see her enthusiastic personality for the Bears. And there's Andrews again. No, can't get that one to drop, but Oldacre with the rebound. Brenda, you didn't we try to wrap back and forth, or there was no wrap battle? No. Or? <laughs> no. no, there was none. And they were just getting such a kick out of it. That's why I was laughing so much. You and me both, Brenda. <laughs> like to see Dre Edwards and Flage Johnson of LSU have a little oh. We've seen flashes too of, of Asia Blackwell getting into the action. So there's a ton of talent, and and Nikki Collins saying, "Hey, if you're not producing, you're going to have to sit and watch." When that's what depth does. Mm -hmm. and we've seen that today. So the biggest lead of the game today for Baylor was 18 points. And now with that basket, Oldacre draws within 10. So Miami not going away. And can Miami fight back? Can, can they absorb this run and, and extend it? Get another stop, get another score. Can Baylor put their foot on the gas pedal and extend this lead? Out of... MacArthur High School, Irving, Texas, same high school that Odyssey Sims went to. She grew up idolizing Odyssey Sims. Jasmine Roberts has been pretty quiet this game, just five points. As she rises up, can't connect on that. Now just two for six from the floor. Wow. Nice pass by Andrews to set up Fauntleroy for the boat bucket. Williams changing directions. Roberts trying to clear a pass. Still struggling. She had such a great run through the NCAA tournament last year for Miami. Such a spark. 
And how about that? Yaya Felder draining a three. With the way that Utah took it to South Carolina, that win keeps looking better and better. It'll be interesting to see how the freshman fits in. Fauntleroy with her second three-pointer of the day in this her first start of the season. That's Consulates. They're defending Oldacre. Oldacre. Well, we've got Lattimore at 6-4, but you know, you talk about Baylor doesn't have a lot of size. Miami, and you kind of think this Baylor team, Steffi, is, is just going to get better and better throughout the year. When you look at the, the players that are getting a lot of playing time, Jada Walker, the transfer from Kentucky, this is her first year. Little Paige Bugs and Fauntleroy. So as they all get to playing together more throughout the course of the season, you've got to think this team is just going to get better and better. Oh, no question. And it's, it's really reps and repetition and getting big confidence wins, like for Baylor today to get a win against Miami. I think the game as a whole, we're going to see some teams just get better and better. Felder, Walker, Fauntleroy all with 12, and Edwards with 10. As now, when they play Providence in South Florida on the 20th and 21st, has 10 ACC teams heading to the NCAA tournament, his projection. So they're going to be tested, and there's going to be a lot of takeaways. For a team that lost a lot for last year's Elite Eight run, and they're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Well, Maya Hilton misses that one. We haven't gotten to talk about her a lot today. She has not scored in this game, but she has been really good for Miami. One of the biggest surprises of her recruiting career, Katie Meyer said, as she's coming off an 11-point game against DePaul but hasn't scored today. Oldacre blocks it right back into the hands of Little Page Bugs. Kansas State has been playing extremely well this year. TCU has been terrific under their new coach. West Virginia uh, has had a great start to the year as well. And uh, Kansas has tested themselves with a very tough non-conference schedule. Oklahoma as well. So with the new four new teams joining the Big 12 uh, and uh, a lot of new faces, it's, it's going to be another interesting year in the Big 12. Heard about Roy Harmon, they aren't paying attention to Texas basketball, but she's been good for a couple of years and she's really showing out again this year. So Jada Walker with a, a terrific game today for Baylor. She really got things started, had nine points in the first five minutes of the game. She's got 12 points, five players and double figures for Baylor. And Jada Walker at the free throw line. Preseason Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. A lot of high expectations for Jada Walker this season at the point guard position for Baylor. And Miami loses for the first time on 